Hi my crafty friends, it's Beverly here over at Crafty and Chaos with day 9 in our 12 Days of Christmas series. As promised, this is a different type of penny spinner card and what it actually is, is a layer that where the penny would spin round and stop and what I've actually used as the stopper is a snowflake, just to make a slightly different card and what we're going to do is get on with that and this is what we're aiming for. So, if you're following along, remember you can stop and pause while you carry on and then carry on the video and so on. So we're going to st start with a basic shape and we're going to bring on the scallop and it's this one, the last one that you can choose, this scallop because it has the most scallop pieces. Now I'm just going to click on this one because this is our matting layer and it gives me an idea what the shape size is because it's a while since I made this one. So it's approximately 6 inches so we'll do it 6 inches by 6 inches. So we'll do that now and we've got maintain aspect ratio checked so we'll get a 6 inch. And I think what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate it, we're going to line the duplicate again for that other layer we're going to line both of these shapes up on the vertical axes and then we're going to just scooch one away a little bit and we want them so that they are just overlapping like so. I'm then going to select both, edit and process the overlap and weld. So that's more or less created our base layer barring the score line. So I'm just going to click on this tool here which is the node tool i'm just clicking and dragging across whilst holding my shift key down so that it drags a straight line and when i double click to anchor it automatically selects it and i'm going to make it a cutting line and also a perforating line then i'm going to click on the page select both the card base and the score line and i'm going to edit and group them this means now that I can move this away freely without it interfering with the score line that's going to stay in place. So now I'm going to bring on the additional scalloped circle that we had. I'm going to place that to the top because we're going to be using that. So what I'm going to do next is bring on the circle. So I'm going to click on the circle and I want it to be, I think it brought it on as is, and then I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to resize it by taking it down. And I'm just going to do this by eye. I want it so that we've got a nice, evenish border on the way around. So I'm just going to take it a little bit smaller, and I think I'm going to make it about 2.85. So I think I'm roughly about at the right size then. So I'm just going to change it to 2.85 inches. Click OK and that will do it for me. I'm going to select both and line them up on the vertical and the horizontal axes using this button and this button. So now that circle in the middle, the smaller of the two, is in the middle. What I'm going to do then is edit process the overlap and subtract and that's effectively punched out that and if I put some colour you can see what I mean it's punched out that circle in the hole so that's that for now so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring on a shape that will allow me to cut a hole through the shape that we've just created because what I want to do is be able to have that shape in my base layer here this matting layer here so i'm going to select both of the shapes line them up on the vertical axis no sorry i didn't undo that one on the horizontal select, select both try again select both and line them up on the horizontal axis so now that's exactly halfway between the two and i'm going to go edit and remove the overlap and as you can see now, that's left us with this like C shape like you can see here. I'm going to delete that now because I don't think we need that again. 
and I'm going to bring on my original matting layer and I'm going to select both, line them up vertically and horizontally and then checking that that one's on top and it is, I'm going to select both, edit and process the overlap, subtract. So that's effectively punched that C out of that layer. So I'm just going to make it that same sim or a similar blue colour to that and that's where we're up to now. So remember I've said before about utilising previous projects from this. I'm going to find the one where I've got a nice snowflake and I've got a nice snowflake there. It's not quite the same as the one that I used originally but I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to select that one and I'm going to use this one and this is going to be the one that I'm going to use as my track for that one. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to score it, shrink it down a little bit and what you can do if you wish and you can either do, choose to do this or not I'm just going to select both of those, edit, process the overlap and subtract and that will punch out that snowflake shape if you will so you couldn't do that um, I wouldn't go too small, otherwise you might find it difficult to actually cut your machine cutting them out because they will be quite small. So I'm just going to make the snowflake a colour that we can see and I'm going to bring it to the top. So now we've got the makings of our penny slider card. So if I bring the pieces in, how they'll be, so we'd have that as the base card. This would complete the circle of the matting layer. This will be the bit that pops up onto the penny slider and then I've made a small oval which you could just print or write or punch, not punch, stamp a little greeting. I'm going to bring it to the top, edit, bring to the top and I'm going to make it white just so you can see it and then that is where I intended to put it on top of the snowflake if you will obviously stick it separate and that's where I was going to put the greeting um, Merry Christmas or Happy New Year or whatever and obviously you can resize it to whatever size you wish you can make it long and narrow if you wish or if you wanted you could bring on an entirely different shape altogether to use for your basic shape so you could bring on more of a rect uh, not a rectangle what's it called an, an, an oxygen octagon or oh, hexagon sorry it's not an octagon it's only got six sides bevel come on um, and then resize that for a different look if you will and you could put your greeting on that or you could just go for your standard rectangle although I would tend to go more for a rounded rectangle and again you can resize that to fit on your snowflake you can get your scan and clock to write your greeting if you wish and if you want to do that you could refer to my other tutorials which show you how to do your own custom greetings. I'm going to make it white and I'm also going to bring it to the top just to finish the file off and that's how we're looking. So you can have that with your Merry Christmas if you wish or alternatively as long as you don't pop it up too far to interfere with the mechanism you could put your greeting in the centre underneath the snowflake so we need to go one layer below and you could have your Merry Christmas on that part there so that's today's card it's a snowflake penny slider on a circle base just for a slightly different card and obviously you can make it look lots of ways different if you wanted you could even stamp on some snowflakes on this base part and add with the versa mark ink and do them in gold or in glitter or any colour you wish or you could add some gems or sequins the sky's the limit right? you can decorate it however you wish it's your card that's just the basics of how to create it then obviously you put it together in a similar way to what I showed you with the other penny slider making sure that you go right round where this perimeter is underneath to make sure that's popped up enough for your penny to slide round but it's not impeded by the actual tape so you'd have to cut some nice thin um, double sided tape going round so that it's popping it up and also around here and then your mechanism is going to be able to move freely um, so that's another interactive card for you 
You'll finish it off by giving it a title. So we're going to call this the Snowflake Penny Slider. And we'll put circular so we know it's a circular card. Just a slightly different shape and obviously one that will stand out from the crowd if the, you're sending it to friends and neighbours. You'd hit the save button to save your project and then you'd hit download and select your way of downloading either by um, downloading it to your actual scan and cut by the wireless transfer or if you've not got that option downloading it to your um, machine and then taking it over on a USB. I'm going to use leave both versions in the file for uploading to my blog so you can be able to get the original one that I set off with that I did several weeks ago now or this one here. I'm sorry I've not been with you this week but I've been I've been very very busy and I've also I've, I've did really succumb to that cold and had to go to bed last night when I got home from school to make sure that was fit enough to go into work today. As you can tell I've still got this really bad throat there's a lot of it around um, certainly at school but we're suffering from like staff being off sick and we've got more cover than we would normally have so that's making things a bit tiresome but it's just the time of year and obviously we're all very busy preparing for Christmas as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. I do appreciate your support and it does spur me on to make more videos. I hope you're enjoying them and recommending them to your, to your friends. And also remember to tell your friends to pop along to my blog at beverly10.blogspot where you can actually download lots of my free files and SVGs, both SVG and FCM, FCM format. So anybody that's got an S, a machine that can only use SVGs, they're already there for you. If you want to use the FCM for your scan and cuts, so well, bear in mind you can also use the SVGs in that sense. But I'm trying to make the files more accessible to people other than just ones with scans and cuts. So I'll see you next time. Bye.